couple of things I want to talk about is uh, basically just the state of the industry, your push uh, in the two-wheeler space. Uh, also, uh, talking about, uh, you know, this whole, uh, which is quite a hot topic right now, from uh, OGL to restricted for tyres, what it means for the local players. I mean, do you welcome it? What are the implications? Uh, is it a way of uh, checking uh, rampant uh, imports? Hormuz, let me just start by uh, where we are today. Right. Um, I, obviously, COVID has set back everything. Uh, um, today, in June, we've had the highest sale. Whether it's a bent-up demand of March, we still have to figure that out. But in truck tires, in the replacement market, has been the highest sale ever for a Polo. Um, even in the agri uh, segment, we've had the highest sale. Passenger car segment is still picking up. Uh, July month is also similar to June. Uh, basically, whoever has the tires at the right time and the right place is going to sell it out. Uh, because freight is moving. Uh, passenger car is slowly coming up. And um, we hope uh, it will come back uh, in the months of August, September. We are seeing OEMs coming up at 50-60% of pre-COVID, uh, both in passenger car. But in uh, CV segment, that is, in as far as OEs are concerned, you would even know that, that we are yeah. still down and out. Uh, we are not seeing any respite in the uh, eight CVs segment. Right. Uh, but that's so, bread and butter also, isn't it? So that must yeah. be uh, some sort of concern. Yeah, it's a big concern. Uh, going forward, you know, even pre-COVID last year, you uh, CV was down. That's so right. uh, after COVID has come in, it's really further gone down. So it's in a big mess. And we're hoping that the government comes up with a scrappage policy, uh, which they've been talking for the past four years. Uh, but recently, only yesterday, we heard some news coming in from the ministry to say scrappage policy should be incentivized also by the manufacturers, uh, by the CV manufacturers. So let's see. We are hopeful that that will come in because it will have to be not only the OEMs, it will also have to be the government incentivizing uh, people. Yeah, I, so so, uh, so uh, then uh, obviously this pent-up demand uh, been come as a bit of a surprise. Uh, I mean, the, you, you say the way it's picked up. Also, could it be this is a time to replace that monsoon? Uh, you know, is a, this is also really the peak time for replacement as well. It should have happened earlier, but we were in lockdown. But yeah. I would imagine that's uh, been kind of shifted right now as people are, uh, you know, starting to move out and uh, vehicles are on the road again. Yeah, so we are hoping that this continues in July, August, but really the test is going to be July, August. And then we are going to hit into Diwali season, September, October. So we're hoping that this continues, but I, I my own gut says it's a bent up demand that's coming in. Uh, and obviously because of monsoon replacing tires. Uh, but let's see, I, I'm uh, hopeful, I'm positive. Uh, but PC, uh, on the passenger car side, that, that's a challenge currently. Uh, right. That's a big, big challenge. But still, numbers are there. I would say they're 80% of pre-COVID as far as right. replacement is concerned. Two-wheeler segment. Uh, no, so let me just finish. Uh, sure. Uh, factories, factories had started. The momentum had started. We were producing at around 80% uh, in all our plants in India. Uh, but then this wave of COVID has come in in a big way. And one has to be extra careful. And safety is first for Apollo. So we've cut back. And uh, on, on purpose, we are not putting pressure on the plants. So some plants are running at 80%, but some plants are down to 40, 50%. Speci uh, specifically like uh, Chennai, Kerala. Kerala has come back with a big uh, COVID uh, uh, issues over there. Restrictions so, again. Yeah. yeah. So um, our plants are in some areas are in the red zone. So one has to be extra careful. So it's really eating off uh, the inventory that was there in March and producing at 50-60% levels. So, so, yeah, no, I just wanted to stop there because Neeraj, what's clear that is this whole stop start as far as lockdowns go, you've uh, you've kind of, uh, uh, let's say, lifted the lockdown, then you reimpose it. Uh, is this, uh, because a lot of industry is saying this actually is having a huge impact because, uh, you know, it, it's not just the period of the lockdown, it's a little bit of before and after. The after effects are felt, uh, you know, beyond that because, uh, again, to restart everything, get the labor back, all that. So, is this a challenge? It's not just two weeks. It can have a ripple effect, uh, you know, going into several weeks. 
uh, you're right. I, 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 what I have said to the plants is that, guys, let's look at flexibility uh, because shutting a tire plant is a problem because it's a whole process, end-to-end -end industry. It's not only that you can uh, operate in silos. And therefore, you do have a lot of scrap or if you do shut it down. So one is cautious and one is only operating at 50-60%. So that stop and uh, go is not happening right now. But it does have a rippling effect for at least, I would say, six to eight months because COVID is here to stay. And one has to live with it until the vaccine is out. Right. Right. And so one has to, in, not only in the plants, but everywhere we have to be flexible. Whether it's right. corporate offices, whether it's sales offices. Um, so one has to have that flexibility. So we are studying how uh, efficient uh, the plants can be in order to save costs. Because fixed costs are there. And those costs are just going to be incurred. Uh, so one is trying to see how efficient we can be. Right. And, and Nira, just looking at the two-wheeler segment where clearly you all are pushing uh, there a lot. Uh, obviously, a lot of potential. Uh, uh, clearly, the recovery post-COVID is going to start in two-wheelers. So, in a way, well-timed. But it's not an easy segment. There are well-entrenched players over there. And it's a low-margin side of the business. So, just your thoughts and strategy on the two-wheeler side as to why the push uh, over there, uh, you know, which is, uh, uh, is it, you just see the potential and the overall pie is big and that's something that can't be overlooked. So, Hormaz, here I want to be very clear. We are not entering the mass two-wheeler segment. Okay. I'm staying far away from that because uh, our competition is heavily embedded into it and it doesn't do anything for me in terms of technology or in terms of EBITDA margin. So, what we have decided is we will keep our foot in that mass segment a little bit uh, where we are buying, we are not investing in it. We are simply buying uh, offtake from a plant in uh, South India and we are only feeding our dealers. Uh, but we are entering into the higher segment of the motorcycle two-wheel uh, segment, uh, which is the high-end bias tires and radials. So motorcycle radials. That's where we want to invest in technology. And we want to be by far the leaders in uh, radials. So whichever segment we are getting into, we are keeping that in mind that firstly, it has to be profitable. So it gives our EBITDA margin push. And secondly, it has to be invested into technology and brand. So we've gone into MCR motorcycle radials. We've invested in, a, in our plant in uh, Limda, in Baroda. Uh, we've invested close to 100 crores. We've been testing it in Europe. And uh, uh, these tires now are ready. Uh, we've been selling in India for the past one year. Now the push has come into more into go, uh, going more radial and going more high-end buyers. So that market is 15% in India. So I'm only playing in that 15% market. I'm not playing in the rest. Let the competition do because that's a bloodbath. Uh, you know, right. there, are, there are manufacturers who've come from uh, Maxis is there. Indians are there. Let them play that game. I don't want to get in there. So, okay. I'm only putting my thrust behind R&D and brand building. That's all. Right. So, so, Neeraj, you've talked about technology. You know, you're uh, expecting that to be a differentiator, especially with, uh, you know, the, uh, let's say, homegrown OEMs over here. Where do you see technology going and how do you see it playing out? I want to talk in the PV segment. Are we going to be going more towards uh, low rolling resistance uh, tires? But obviously, there's a lot of conflict over there in terms of grip and stuff like that, which... I think only technology can kind of balance out all these conflicting, uh, uh, you know, factors. So, just to get your thoughts, where do you see, so uh, you know, Apollo going? Which area do you see uh, it focusing in terms of a future trend? So, already, um, uh, Ormaz, it, obviously, it started from Europe. Uh, a, a rolling resistance is becoming more stringent uh, given EV vehicles coming out. Fuel efficiency. And the CO2 type. requirements as well. Yeah. Yeah. CO2 norms. And now, OEs in India have started pushing us. So already projects in R&D are on and uh, for uh, ro uh, low rolling resistance and fuel efficient tires. So very soon we are hitting those targets in uh, Europe and deploying it in India. Uh, so both R&D Asia and R&D Europe have, are working towards these and that's what's going to be the next generation, I would say, of uh, technology that's going to be embedded in these tires. So, what you're saying is LRR tires are 
it's it's, it's a big focus area. Not just okay. uh, I mean all uh, tire um, uh, suppliers are having to look towards that just because of the way regulations and the uh, you know EVs are are uh, are going to be the future. So that's what you're saying is going to be the future. I mean. You know, run flats is now something which people are not focusing on so much. So, no, really, it's a reality. It's, a reality. it's a reality and uh, tire, uh, uh, all tire companies are going towards LRR and we have to come out with them. That's, uh, I mean, the OEs are pushing us and um, obviously it will mean that the cost of uh, the tires will go up because the materials are much more expensive. The process is different. Uh, we're already testing it in Hungary. Uh, we've already put in a lot of uh, equipments and a lot of processes and R and D is now testing it in Hungary. Once it is, uh, uh, you know, commercialized, then deployment will happen all over, all of them. Right. And uh, Neeraj, uh, looking at the Indian market, uh, you know, you've got certain sizes. Uh, in fact, uh, you're looking at the sizes going up, uh, 17 inch and plus. I mean, are you hoping to target the luxury end of the market? I know 17 is important from an SUV point of view, but when you're looking at the sedans and all, it's clearly the luxury sedan. So just your sense is where your focus is going to be in the domestic market, you know, especially uh, looking at the higher end because the sense one gets is that's where you're going to be uh, uh, aiming for a lot more. No, it's a very good question. We, In fact, uh, it's linked to the imports uh, restriction. Uh, yeah, I wanted to come to that as well. Yeah. So, yeah. so it, it, they both are linked because uh, the imports were happening really in the higher segment of the market, which is the 17, 18, 16 inches and up. And uh, that now with the import restriction has, uh, I'm seeing it very positive because it opens up the market for us because we are anyways playing in that 16 inch up in Europe. And it opens up that market for us to go into the higher segment. And only last week, we have had a dealer digital conference. We have launched a scheme in the market to promote 16 inch and up tires uh, in India for Apollo branded. And we are also now bringing in Fred is time to be made in India, a few SKUs on the higher segment because you know, the Indian mindset is also, I have a Mercedes, I want a European brand and not an Indian brand. So here Apollo has the advantage of having a domestic Apollo brand and a Made in India, Fredestein brand also, which could cater so to... So, what you're saying is you are going to start manufacturing Fredestein in India? Yes, I have. Okay. And mm. what sizes would they be upwards of 16 inch? Yes, yes, yes. It will be only the higher end of the segment. Really targeting the Mercedes, the BMWs, the Audis in India. And that is uh, three months. Uh, uh, within three months, we'll be launching the Fredestein higher end diameter tires. But... Apollo branded tires, already the schemes are out. Already we are focusing on the 17, 18 inch uh, segment in the market. Right. And, uh, you know, Neeraj, uh, specifically on the current, uh, you know, let's say change in uh, regulation where tires have moved from o OGL, open general license to the restricted list. Uh, just your thoughts on that. Uh, I mean, why do you think it was done? Uh, is it to prevent just rampant imports coming in from... Uh, all over uh, and uh, clearly this is a big opportunity for uh, local uh, tire many, uh, tire companies as well. So just your thought on how yeah, I, significant this uh, shift is. I think, I, I, I mean, we welcome it with open arms. It, it opens up um, a huge opportunity for Indian manufacturers or for manufacturers who are in India. Uh, the likes of Michelin and Bridgestone were importing the higher end tires, like I said. So it opens up, it gives India also a thrust into R&D and putting money behind R&D. And I want to tell you, Apollo has been slowly, slowly increasing our investments in R&D. Because to me, five years ago, I said my key pillars are brand and R&D. Create brands and create good products by putting money behind R&D. Today, we have over 350 engineers, scientists between India and Europe. Um, Five years ago, we used to be only 1% of R&D was our cost to sale. Today, it has gone up to 3%. Uh, and if you see the German magazines uh, who are testing our tires, today, Fredestein and Apollo have uh, podium positions. So I'm really competing with the Michelins and the Pirellis of the world and still coming at podium positions. And therefore, this restriction also helps India to go up the R&D ladder. You know, we now need to understand and guys, let's start putting money behind R&D and not just coming out with ordinary uh, products in the market. So it, it 
gives you a good horizon. It gives you a great opportunity for India to uh, make in India products that will cater to the Indian customer. But Anira, just from a consumer point of view, being very frank, at the real high end, super high end, volumes are going to be really small for anyone to locally produce. They will just have to be imported. There's no other way. I'm talking about 18, 19, you know, for the super uh, SUVs and the really uh, high end luxury SUVs and the super sports cars. Uh, do you think that's uh, a bit of an issue and maybe, uh, you know, just the volumes over there don't uh, really justify local manufacturing? And if they go into a restricted list, it just makes it more uh, painful for, let's say, consumers. So, uh, almost for Apollo, I have other markets also. So, uh, we will be producing it in India. Let's say a uh, 19-inch, I will produce 1,000 tires. Uh, market is very small in India. But then I have markets in Asia where we are selling, uh, uh, you know, we, we set up our office in Thailand, I think, three years ago. Uh, uh, we have Dubai, we have all of South Africa. So, we will start exporting these high-end tires there also. Currently, we were uh, se currently we are selling Fredestein in these markets. So, now I'll start introducing Apollo high-end also into these markets. That's the idea. So, what you're saying is that you will produce them in India, even though there's not much of a market in India. It's for export. And if there is a demand in India, you'll supply the Indian market yes. with these high-end tires as well. Yes, yes. And I right. agree with you. There's a very small market in India of the high, high-end. So I'm talking about the Z-rated tires and all yeah, those, yeah, you know, because honestly, yeah, yeah. that uh, is going to be an issue. I don't know how they'll get around that. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Let's say Ferrari. I mean, someone wants a Z-rated tire. That right. that is an issue. Whether Apollo will get into that market, I don't think so. Uh, any trends you are seeing, uh, you know, uh, with the pandemic, uh, or is it too early to say? I know we can't predict what's happening next next week, so uh, I won't hold you to it <laughs> if you don't get it completely right, but uh, are you seeing a kind of um, a, a shift in, in, in any, uh, you know, I mean, everything really moving towards the lower end of the market uh, that you are having to ramp up? Let's say, you know, we're talking right now my and tiles, but I'm talking about the good old 13 and 14 inches as well. Uh, do you see that's really where the core is going to be going forward? So, you know, um, one thing COVID will do is you will get more passenger car, uh, single or two uh, people buying more. So, public transport is going to come down and people yeah. are going to go for two-wheelers. Two-wheelers are going to go to smaller cars. So, 13, 14 inch will, uh, the trend will start coming back. Uh, and that, I don't see it now, obviously, because the markets are closed and, you know, lockdown is still there in uh, bits and pieces. But when the market does open, people are going to shift to uh, buying cars and uh, using less public transport. So, and all these taxis that were, uh, you know, uh, uh, taking people of, tons of people in one sumo, uh, that is right. going to come down. That's going to come down. That shift is going to happen. Right. And so, the uh, effect on that commercial segment of that market, the taxi segment is going to uh, uh, get hit. Uh, and, and those people are going to start looking at buying smaller cars and therefore the demand on 12-inch, 13-inch should go up. Thank you.